Well, Dave, uh, appreciate the time. This is like the fourth time I've actually interviewed you, I believe. And uh, so it's always a pleasure. I appreciate you taking the time out as, as usual. Um, so one thing I'm going to ask you about likable social media. I know uh, I love the book originally when I first interviewed you three years ago or so. Um, you know, why do you update it? Great question. So, you know, we wrote the book four years ago now, and the, the, the world has changed a lot in social media in four years. So when we first wrote the book, Facebook advertising wasn't nearly as big. Um, Instagram didn't exist. Pinterest didn't exist. Snapchat didn't exist. Google Plus didn't exist. And just four years later, the social media landscape has completely changed. So um, I, I thought I thought we had to do right by our 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 our, our listeners to uh, to give them an, uh, and 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 our and our authors to uh, sorry our our readers to give them a new version of the book. And now the reality is the strategies have not changed. Many of the strategies are still the same, same from four years ago, but the tools have changed a lot. And the way that you implement the strategies have, have, has changed a lot. And uh, the importance of advertising has, has changed and increased a lot in the last four years. So it was time for an update. So we added lots of new case studies and uh, you know, really just brought it up to date. The, uh, I was going to ask you what's, the, what's, what's new in the book, but I think you kind of just nailed down most of the stuff anyways. But uh, as I went through, I found a whole bunch of new stuff in the book, obviously, to read as well. Hey, so one of the other things, what, what is like the biggest change you've seen from when you first wrote this until now? And that could be a platform base or it could be what you're seeing with what people are actually doing. Yeah, I would say the very biggest change has been the role of uh, Facebook advertising. So four years ago when we wrote the book, you could – uh, you could post to Facebook and have your stuff actually seen uh, without uh, advertising. And now, I, I, and, and it was great. Social media was this great equalizer and everyone had a shot. And I, I still think the reality is that you don't need to spend a lot of money with Facebook, but, but, but you do need to spend now. And so um, four years later in today's world, it really is pay to play on Facebook. And I, and I believe I've, I've written the book. Uh, with the theory that LinkedIn and, and and Twitter will become pay to play as well in the next uh, in the next you know several months and, and, and couple years, so I just believe that what started wa once as a the great wild wild west in terms of anyone having a shot has become a little bit more challenging to get through the clutter and and you, you kind of got to pay to uh, to play now. Yeah, I I agree with the advertising side of things. I really truly believe that uh, I'm trying to see that. Yeah, so I'm I'm showing you I, I'm I'm broadcasting, so I figured let let people see you talking to camera as well. I don't know if they can see you. Excellent. Probably not. Camera. It's you don't want to see me. My ugly mug is like you wouldn't believe. So hey, anyways, the uh, no, I agree with the advertising side of things. I think you know, especially uh, Facebook, the, their costs for um, you know pay per click compared to say even Google is so much lower. I, I, it's Google's got to run. They're they're gonna they're gonna have a huge run on them. On, uh, on seeing Facebook. I, I didn't like it before. I actually like Facebook advertising over uh, over Google. Welcome aboard. Yeah. The uh, Hey, so the other one too is um, what is something from way back when until now, what is one of the social media platforms that you thought might be bigger that isn't nearly as big as it, as it is or should be or even in the last couple of years? Yeah, good question. I think that's one that I, I would say I've never been asked before. So let me take a moment to think on it. Um, what's one social platform that I thought was going to be bigger that hasn't? Well, I will admit that very early on, I thought Google Plus would be a little bigger. And I've, I've never been a huge Google guy, but I, they put so many resources into it. I did think Google Plus would be, would be more successful than it's been. And, uh, you know, a couple of years later, it, it's gonna, it's on its way to joining the long list of, uh, of uh, roadside, uh, of, de of, of dead, dead, dead rodents uh, in the Google world. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, from Orkut to Google Buzz to Google Wave and now to Google Plus, Google has has pretty much consistently failed at social media, and uh, I, 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 I missed that one. Yeah, I, uh, I thought you were going to say Google Buzz, actually, but, uh, you know, as, as the one platform. It's, that thing just died a slow, painful death. It was just uh, horrific. Hey, what, what about one of the platforms that you, um, you think is going to be the next up-and-comer? Well, Meerkat, you know, in Meerkat, I, I have not seen so – and unfortunately, of course, this happened after we published uh, 
the the new copy of the book. Uh, I'll, I'll hold you up know, to you, um, so it's double, double. There you go. There you go. go. So, so um, yeah, in, 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 in just a month, um, I, Meerkat has generated more buzz and more excitement and more users and more more, more rapid user growth than I've seen um, since Facebook. I have not seen this kind of quick growth uh, since Facebook itself. And so um, I don't know whether Meerkat itself will win or whether it will be a um, – uh, another a similar model, uh, 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 Twitter just bought a, a company called Periscope that is similar, live streaming. I have a good friend who is in stealth mode on a similar app, but certainly either Meerkat or the, a competitor uh, will, uh, will emerge because the concept of live streaming through your social graph um, and through something that can be distributed as quickly as, as Meerkat can happen is very, very powerful. By the way, I liked uh, you were trying to get me to go on at peer.in and I went to that and took a look at nice platform as well. There's something that I think is really cool with that, uh, you know, collaborate with up to 80 of your friends, right? So I love a peer.in. We, that's our cloud-based uh, video sharing. Uh, we, we use it to connect our, our, our multiple offices uh, at Likeable. I use it to connect to partners whenever possible. It's really a nice, nice cloud-based software. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, the other one here, I got a question. It's, um, you know, it's, Landscape changes all the time, but the here and now, if someone, and it's going to be kind of how long is a piece of string, I think, but if someone had to focus on a platform to, you know, master, uh, and let's say it's more for, for business, right, as opposed to anything, what should they focus on? Ultimately, it really depends on your audience. I mean, and people ask me this all the time, and it depends on your audience. You know, if you had to choose just one and I just heard a business, I would probably say LinkedIn is the single most uh, important platform for business to business uh, activity. But uh, it really does depend on your business. If you're an e-commerce business, it's Pinterest. If you're B2C, it's Facebook. If you are a retailer, it might be Instagram. If you are a blogger, it might be Twitter. So uh, it really depends on the, on the um, on, on your audience and your goals. I'm going to come back to one thing you just said because you just talked about LinkedIn a bit as well as why do you think it's going to be pay for play? Why do you uh, what's what's leading you to that assumption right now? Um, Facebook did it. <laughs> uh, LinkedIn and Twitter are public companies that need to monetize, um, and there's just so much noise. I mean, when I, when I started writing for LinkedIn uh, two years ago, uh, there was 500 of us uh, that were writing for LinkedIn on the LinkedIn Influencer Program and. You know, every post that I wrote generated between a hundred thousand and two and a half million views. Yeah. Um, that was that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and and now they opened up their publishing platform to all three hundred million users, and it's really really crowded and really really noisy. And what began as um, a very carefully curated uh, content stream is now a complete mess. So LinkedIn has uh, a choice. They can either. Um, uh, let it be the you know everyone you know posts and let the algorithm sort itself out um or they can start charging and if they start charging you're going to see two things one one they're going to make money <laughs> yeah. um, and, and two um they're going to clean up the feeds a little bit because you're going to get sort of you know professionals and those that are actually um you know spending money and therefore sort of uh, being more careful about their resources, put a uh, post on uh, and, 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 and put money on the, the LinkedIn platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, good, good response to that. It's uh, interesting insight. Hey, the, um, you know, apart from buying your book, uh, how would people succeed in social media? Like what's the, what's kind of a good rule that someone should, uh, should undertake in succeeding in social media? Well, it's a broad question, but I would say um, think about listening before you speak. It continues to be a very important tenet of likable social media and everything I, I really believe in. Um, it, 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 it's easy to jump in thinking that it's all about the talking, it's all about the marketing, it's all about the broadcasting. And, and there are great tools for broadcasting like Meerkat and like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Those are great tools for broadcasting. But all the social media tools are great for listening as well, paying attention to what other people are saying. And, and that's, that's some of the great value of social media. Absolutely, you got a great you got a great section in the book on listening, by the way, which is is good to hear. Hey, um, so I got invited to uh, Likeable Local. Um, tell me a little bit about Likeable Local. 
So likable local is our so I think you're talking about likable VIP maybe or is that it app. VIP? Sorry, yes, that's it. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. So likable local is our software company that we launched two years ago. Software for small businesses to yeah. manage social media, and um, we're about to launch uh, likable VIP, which is a a uh, free app. Well, it's gonna it's gonna be twenty dollars a month with a free trial, and we're actually giving away fifty thousand free memberships right now, um, just to get people pumped for it. And it's an app for managing your social media. It actually has listening uh it has uh storytelling ideas if you ever if you ever um, played mad libs as a kid it's mad libs for social media um and and it also has landing pages so we believe that these are really important social media tools listening content and landing pages and so we combined it all into one and um we're, we're gonna make fifty thousand vips uh for free and um then we're gonna hopefully build a build a nice business out of it it's a good good way to monetize it. Get fifty thousand people on to start with, and uh, and go from there. Good for you. Hey, um, I've got uh, I got a couple last questions here. So sure. one is it's interesting because I was interviewing a guy the other day who talks about how to write books and, and everything like that. Uh, brought up a question because you've written what three number one bestsellers now, isn't it, or something like that? How many how many do you have under your belt? Uh, three books so far. Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. bestsellers. So, so three bestsellers, which is great. How you know how has writing a book changed your life? Um, I get a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, one, one thing I did not anticipate when I, when I started writing was that by becoming a bestseller, I would get books sent to me. So I have a library of literally hundreds and hundreds of books that people send me um, to review or blurb or write about or whatever. So that's one of the really fun random things. I end up giving away a lot of books to people. Um, and, you know, I just think it's, it's opened up a lot of doors for me that I, I didn't think I would have in terms of speaking. Uh, my speaking rate went from um, like free <laughs> or charging a couple thousand dollars to you know tens of thousands of dollars, sort of much 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 better speaking rates. Um, yeah, I've been very very fortunate, very very blessed uh, by the success of the books and. Uh, one of the, my favorite things to do because of that is to mentor young authors and and help authors. Um, uh, or and want to be authors uh, get get out there with books and and then make the bestseller list and um, be successful and you know sort of take what I've learned and sharing that with others. Excellent. So I, I've got one question less. I got 15 minutes on with you right now. So I figured tens of thousands of dollars. You just gave me twenty thousand dollars worth of your time. I appreciate Not it. Bad. Hey. So uh, chapter 11. One of the best ones I like in the book is providing value. So it's you know it made me think about it. it was, by leveraging a social media, what is one of the best ways that people can provide value for others? What's a what's a good way? What's a what's some insight that you have on that? Well, you know, I really like to think about the problems that you solve for people, and then how can you solve that problem at scale by giving away uh, free content? So, uh, if you're an accountant, you can share you know general tax saving tips. If you're a lawyer, you can share the latest uh, news and how it affects uh, you know you. you some certain legal considerations. If you're a marketer, you can share tips on how to market and grow your business. And um, some people are still afraid of giving away content. They want to charge for content. They want to. They they're, they're afraid if they give away all the content, people won't hire them. But uh, the opposite is true. The more you give away, uh, the more you breed trust, and trust, of course, breeds more business. And so it's really um it's a really an amazing uh, cycle. Um, and it's 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 contrary it's 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 contrary to what some people might say, but I have to tell you, having experienced this myself, and now for literally over a thousand uh, customers, uh, you know, g give the content away, and uh, you will get customers in return. Absolutely, you have a you have a great story in the book about some guy who started his own advertising agency, and then. Uh, and you were like beating yourself up, and then the next day you had like the karma came your way, right, or whatever. Exactly. It it's a yeah, great, a great story. I'm not, I'm not going to give it all away, but people need to buy the book because it's a great book. Uh, the revised edition is amazing. And Dave, as usual, always great talking to you. Appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for everything you do. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. You bet, Dave. I'll get this poked up uh, probably the next week here or two, and.